what God left behind in the pocket. I won't be able to read the questions, but somebody else can read it. Yeah. Ready? Ready. <laughs> <laughs> Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvinavadhi Tamastuma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Om Bhadram Karne Bhihi Om Bhadram Karne Bhihi Srinayama Devaha Srinayama Devaha Bhadram Pashyema Bhadram Pashyema Akshabhirya Jatraha Shri Rangai Shri Rangai Tushtu Bhagum Sastanu Bhihi Swara Tushtu Bhagum Sastanu Bhihi Tushtu Bhagum Sastanu Bhihi Vyashema Yashema Devahitam Devahitam Yadayuhu Yadayuhu Swastina Indra Swastina Indra Vridha Shravaha Vridha Shravaha Swastina Pusha Swastina Swastina Starkshyo Swastina Starkshyo Arishta Nemihi Arishta Nemihi Swastino Swastino Brahaspatir Dadhatu Brahaspatir Dadhatu Om Shanti 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 Tvam gunatraya titaha Tvam gunatraya titaha Tvam avastha traya titaha Tvam avastha traya titaha Tvam deha traya titaha Tvam deha traya titaha Tvam kala traya titaha Tvam kalatraya titaha Tvam mooladhara Tvam mooladhara Stito sinityam Stito sinityam Tvam mooladhara Stito sinityam Tvam mooladhara Stito sinityam Tvam shakti Tvamshaktitrayat makah Tvam yogino Dhyayanti nityam Tvam brahmatvam Vishnustvam Rudrastvam Indrastvam Indrastvam Agnistvam Vayustvam Suryastvam Chandramastvam Brahmabhurbhuva Subharum Brahmabhurbhuva Subharum Let's try this slightly differently because you see where the full stop is at the last sentence. It starts from the first thvam and does not end till bhur bhuva suvaro. You know? ah. So we have to you know, make sure that at least we have a semblance of respecting the full stop. So let's try this again. Shinshin can come here. Yeah, you can sit here. Tvam 
ತ್ವಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾ ತ್ವಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಸ್ತ್ವ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ನೌ ಐ ಎಂ ಬೋಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಡು ಅ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಮೌರ್ ತ್ವಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾ ತ್ವಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಸ್ತ್ವ ರುದ್ರಸ್ತ್ವ ರುದ್ರಸ್ತ್ವ ಇಂದ್ರಸ್ತ್ವಗ್ನಿಸ್ತ್ವ ವಾಯುಸ್ತ್ವ ಸೂರ್ಯಸ್ತ್ವ ಚಂದ್ರಮಾಸ್ತ್ವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ಲಿ ಗಣಪತಿ ಇಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಟು ಹಿಯರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಸ್ಟರ್ಡೇ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಕ್ಲಿಫ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಗ what was the cliff hanger yesterday hmm? where had we stopped yesterday what was what did i promise to tell today huh we have till 10 o'clock so i'll sit <laughs> ah see i was asking you to come i'm glad you're here Yes, I said this is the best place to wait when you are locked out. Yeah, come. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, come, come. Take a seat. So, where did we leave it off yesterday? What did I say? I would tell. Hmm? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, the ka- yes, that's true, but what did I say? I would say. What was the cliffhanger? You know? This is just like watching TV, especially if you're online. <laughs> you, should, you should remember where that... Yeah. Where it was left off. Well, we, huh? left, we did the first line. We said no, but what line. did... Where, forget the line. Where did I leave it off? i said i would i promise to tell you something correct ha ah. so show me that you really want to know what i promised to tell you ha <laughs> what was it, huh? what was it? <laughs> nice try so <laughs> <laughs> like it's sneaking in <laughs> nice try go back to the uh, go back just go inside yourself right now go back to thinking about the first line which was elucidated how it was elucidated get that sangati the connection yeah try a little bit you know we have till 10 o'clock yeah i have extended the 15 minutes i have taken for myself <laughs> ah so try it's a good exercise and this is not anyone's fault it happens and so you know because the mind is all over there's a lot happening in everyone's life holiday time yeah so it's okay so without blaming yourself try to see where is that what did i promise to say hmm? how to ah <laughs> see a two minute contemplation paid off yes so how to be free of gunas that was the cliff hanger we were discussing specifically let us go you know back to what we were discussing we were discussing the line tvam tvam means what you right no you okay so <laughs> tvam wh- what are you guna traya atitah atitah means beyond yeah not like swami beyond ananda 
There is one cartoonist who named himself. He's not a Swami. He's a cartoonist, and he named himself. He's in California. Named himself Swami Beyond Ananda. You know, Swami Atit Ananda. I suppose that that makes no sense because there is nothing beyond Ananda. And uh, but here there is something beyond the gunas. And what are the gunas? The three, the three colorations that trap the mind into various limitations, like the one we just encountered, <laughs> forgetting <laughs> what what went before, and that forgetting is associated with which guna? Thoughts. Ah, that was very well remembered. <laughs> So we see now a demonstration, maybe that's why it happened, a demonstration of how the mind helplessly, hopelessly is in the grip of these gunas. Correct? And then this is what, you know, Arjuna is told in the Bhagavad Gita, that this whole entire universe, there is not a single place on this canvas of this universe, of this Jagat, that has been left out by this artist called Maya, where her palette, where her brush has been spared. There is not a single, there is not enough even a place occupied by a point of a pin that is without the gunas. Jagat means the tapestry of the Jagat will have the skeins of the skeins or skeins, whatever you call them, of these three colors, coloration that trap this entire universe and all creatures in it, not just human beings. All creatures come under the spell of these gunas. And what are these gunas? They are a manifestation of the vikshepa shakti of mother maya. Yes, they, that is how she uses these colorations to project. Whatever she wants, you are limited, you can't remember anything, you know, you are full of tamas, you are an idiot, this is what everyone thinks, you know. Everyone thinks about each other and about themselves. This is this, is this whole spoof, this colouring is this spoof. And let us just now look at what this coloration affects. It affects the body, yes or no? Yes. yes. Does it affect the mind? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Does it affect the senses? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Does it affect the Atma? No. 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 Abba. Oh. <laughs> so, we cannot say that there are three kinds of Atma. There is a Sattvic Atma, oh, Poojaniya, you know, worth worshipping. And then there is a, you know, Rajasic Atma, jumping up and down Atma. Yeah competitive Atma, <laughs> wants to be the best Atma and then there is a wake me up when it's all over Atma, <laughs> a languishing fellow, inertia, apathetic, tamasic Atma. Thankfully that is not the case and that is what is called Atita. Atita doesn't mean somehow, you know, somewhere you have to look outside of the universe. No. That is the beauty of this knowledge, that you don't have to remove the universe like you remove cream from the milk. You don't have to remove the universe in order to have darshan of Bhagavan, Ganapati, Atma, the Tvam that is Aham, the Aham that is Tvam. <laughs> And so you don't have to think that the universe and all its manifestations are in my way of seeking, of seeing, of being that one alone. And this is what this whole sixth mantra is all about. Because you are already free of the universe. Where is the universe? Right here, <laughs> in this uh, miserable, you know, six inches between the temples, yeah. That's where the universe exists. No, 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 there is a universe outside. Where? Show me. 
no right there okay right there wherever you are pointing to right there who is pointing aham i <laughs> and so what are you pointing to i am pointing to this this is the universe aham i am pointing to this this is the universe one manifestation in the universe look okay i am looking but are you looking yes i am also looking where are you cognizing this that you are asking me to cognize you are cognizing it here <laughs> the flower is not here it is here first correct this is what is called vritti gnanam that you first cognize the when i say flower even before i show it already the flower has is starting to jump in the mind vritti flower you know there is a mental impression of the flower which is corroborated so first there is vritti vyapti and then there is phala vyapti oh but we are looking at pushpam not phala <laughs> <laughs> so these are technical words for the two fold cognitive <coughs> process first there is a cognition and then everything is actually a recognition or a recognition so the cognition happens no but what when the child looks for the flower for the first time then there is a different kind of cognition i don't know cognition is there i don't know this yellow or something is being shown <laughs> yeah but there is a certain cognition and what is that cognition i don't know flower cognition is there so when i say i don't know flower flower is or not yes flower is i don't know this yellow thing forget the name even flower but that yellow thing that i don't know shines i don't know shines i don't know this object shines but this object never goes away correct and the cognizer of this object never goes away and the cognizer goes from this object to that object from devadatta to somadatta to yagnadatta and all other dattas and devas and then what and if there is nothing to cognize what remains this remains is remains i remains and that is free of all the colorations there is not a satvik i a rajasik i and tamasik i at this level of cognition that cognition is nothing but the presence when i say flower is that isness that i cognize is actually a recognition of the i itself plus the name and the form called flower understood yeah so the i is just an extension in the form of the flower so the i plus name and form i am and then flower is correct mm -hmm. you cannot say flower is therefore i am that is backwards so i am and then i am saying this is so the isness of this very quickly becomes wasness right mm -hmm. yeah flower gone but i still is but that's not grammatically correct <laughs> never mind <laughs> you understand it's enough flower is flower was and the one who says flower was is no ah. the is that was never was and will never be was is i this is gunatraya tita yeah it sounds wonderful <laughs> but to, how to apply this <laughs> when i get into the the spell the jala maya jala means the net maya is like a foxy hunter you know waits for the trap to close she has all the time in the world she has spread this net of sattva rajas tamas each not <laughs> a sattva rajas tamas and created an artificial floor called the jagat this is what they do to trap animals unfortunately birds especially so what you do is make a hole a large hole you can clear out things 
not so much a hole, a shallow area. You spread the net and then you rig it up to the next tree with the help of a string that when you pull, the whole thing comes up. And then over this net, you spread an elaborate forest floor. You put twigs, you put dried leaves, some mulch, soil, everything. And then to make it more attractive, you put some dried berries and bird seed. And they talk to each other, oh, come, come, come. <laughs> One says, come, come, come. Let's go here. There's a lot of bird seed. And the wise one says, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. No, 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 come, come, everyone. And soon a flock of the birds will be, you know, eating the seeds all together. And then the hunter, very clever hunter is waiting in the wings. And then unseen, he just pulls this rope. And along with the, the false floor, everyone is trapped. Yes. So to this bhokta, <laughs> feeding on the berries of Sattva Rajas Tamas, is trapped in this net of Maya. This is what Arjuna is told. That there is not a single piece, not a single little tiny bit of the universe that is not affected by Maya. Who says that? You know? One who is never affected by Maya cognizes this. This is so beautiful. What you cognize, you are not. What you observe, you are not. So the one who says that the entire universe, without exception, is, you know, besotted by these three gunas, is the one who is not besotted, is the one who is sanely free of all of them. This is so fantastic. And Krishna, Lord Krishna observes this, observes this and tells Arjuna that you be free of the three gunas. You be nistrai gunyaha, you know, bahubrihi. The one for whom, it's a compound. So the one who is worthy of not being affected by the three gunas. You be that one. And he says, great. Okay, how? <laughs> and the, the way of attaining or the way of recognizing I am free of gunas in and through the jagat without needing to remove the jagat, in and through the jagat, that thread of cognition that is there, that, that, that single thread of me as the cognizer, the witness, the one who is free of everything runs through the universe and is always the same. I have to just understand that. So how do I do that in my daily life? He says. And in fact, he doesn't even ask the question overtly. Bhagavan Krishna understands that he has, he has that worry or that concern. And he gives a few ways to transcend the gunas, to, to practice understanding that I am already free of the gunas. That is the transcendence. It's not that you have to jump out of the universe. Where are you going to go, you know? <laughs> and he gives a few upayas. Upaya means what? Muffins. Hmm? Ways. Ways, yes. I thought you said muffins, but you didn't, yeah. So, <laughs> It's a good upaya for hunger, but, <laughs> but yes, you know. So, whatever needs to be done, remedies, remedial measures. Nistraigunyo, traigunya vishaya vedaha, nistraigunyo bhava arjuna. How? Nirdvandvaha. Nirdvandva, dvandva means? Two, 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 two. Yes. Duality. Nirdvandvaha. Become non-dual. What? How to become? <laughs> Nirdvandvo. That bhava has, to, you know, has anuvritti. Nirdvandvo bhava. It has to be carried over to each and everything. You know? Nirdvandvo bhava means what? Become non-dual. How to become non-dual? <laughs> Let not this duality grip you. You are already non-dual. There is no becoming. 
becoming in in this thing is very unbecoming in this business <laughs> so let not the duality grip you in any way how how to not let this duality of the gunas affect me catch hold of sattva nitya sattvastha sattvastha sattve tishthati iti sattvastha the one who has the one who is always in sattva the one who sits in sattva so of all the three gunas catch the one that is the best and the least problematic correct no but then sattva how to give up sattva don't worry about that now <laughs> that is a long way off catch hold of sattva catch hold of sattva in the lifestyle because the mind and the body are connected correct yes or no yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then if the body is in tamas can the mind be in sattva <coughs> no even a child will say that it's not possible if the body and the mind are in tamas can the senses be sattvic no so then what happens at the level of the lifestyle is that first since the mind is the one that is affected by the three gunas i want to rid the mind i want to purify the mind by shaking the rajas and the tamas out of it like one does a rug outside <laughs> yeah you take the rug it's very easy you just bang it on the side of the thing you know and then you shake out all the things that should not be there so here the mind is like a rug you know it lies low and it becomes the it 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 becomes like a um static uh, magnet for all kinds of tamasic and rajasic impressions which stick on to the mind so we need for it to be in sattva so you can shake off the rajas and the tamas yes but then it will collect it again so this is something that has to be done frequently not only that you can shake off the rajas and the tamas for sure but it's easier if it has an anti cling surface on this rug mm -hmm. ah sattva is anti cling for the other two yes non stick surface so that the rug doesn't catch hold of this fibers of rajas and tamas and then keep reproducing them and spreading them all over so you coat it with the sattva paint so to speak how your whole lifestyle has now been given an invitation to change you cannot expect the poor mind to be sattvic when the body is you know dipped in tamas you know like candy chocolate dipped you know something now there is the dip everything in chocolate banana dipped in chocolate apple dipped in chocolate so likewise mind dipped in tamas you know body dipped in tamas It definitely will have a mind also dipped in tamas so then at the grossest level we start because it's something tangible so you sattvify your lifestyle <laughs> yes sattvify it now don't wait till oh, let me start next week new year is coming it's a good time to have you know shake all this out <coughs> so how to sattvify the lifestyle there are some guidelines given through the entire bhagavad gita which goes into great detail eat things that are light eat when you are hungry eat things that are easy to digest stop eating when you are not hungry how to know when i have had enough well they say that it takes 20 minutes for the mind for the brain to tell the stomach it is full yeah to to have that awareness of the sensation it's full so stop eating 15 minutes before you are full yeah <laughs> so these kinds of things we can practice you know and and then what do i 
what do I give? What kind? This is the diet for the body. And then going subtler, what kind of a diet do I feed the senses? Because you see, everybody is an addictive personality. You know, somebody said, oh, there are some addictive personalities. Everybody is an addictive personality. You are talking of the body-mind-sense complex. It is the most addictive thing. Whatever you give, it will want more. Even when it says in the beginning, I don't like it. You know, sattva is a cultivated uh, guna. It comes easily at the level of one's swarupa, is closest to sattva. That's why you have to catch hold of and ride the sattva horse. You have to catch hold of sattva. But since there is resistance, blocks, fears and resistance of resistance, therefore, you know, one does not want to go there because of fears. It's a self-flagellating way of just remaining in tamas and saying, I can't, I can't do anything. Uh, you know, this, is, this becomes an excuse for living. And then the medical establishment helps. You know, you have this complicated syndrome. <laughs> They'll give a name for it. They'll name it after the fellow who, who found the syndrome, who had the original tamas attack, perhaps. <laughs> and there is no cure. Of course there is no cure. How will there be a cure? And so there is a lot of ways in which we can help ourselves at the level of the body to keep it sattvic. You know, so that includes taking a shower every day, you know, wearing clean clothes, wearing, you know, wearing things that, that, that help because there are certain colors that, that repel tamas, you know, and those colors can be, can be made part of the lifestyle. And certain colors attract tamas. You try it. Certain colors are very rajasic. You know, like these uh, bright red, very rajasic. And if one is prone to rajas, desist from wearing that. Wear other colors. Little more muted pastel shades for the people who are light colors, for the people who are prone to rajas. Prone to rajas and tamas, both. Tamas more dull colors, black, all these things, you know we avoid. And then having a routine is the best way to, to beat rajasic and tamasic tendencies. You have a routine. Usually we all, we, in America, in the West, everyone has a routine. There's a five weekday routine and the, and the two weekend days routine which pulls down and the weekend day routine is so extreme and comes from this desperation of not having enough time and not enjoying oneself during the other five days. So that you make the weekend extend, 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 extend till one is stretched out like a used piece of elastic. Yeah, and then the next day, Monday. <laughs> and then you go like that to the office, seeing you, everyone else also is like that. <laughs> And then everybody has this, yeah, Monday morning blues. Now that becomes a societal thing. It becomes a social fact. Excused tamas becomes a social fact. But then, you know, now, then they say, okay, body is sleep deprived. How can the mind function? Why is it sleep deprived? Because of the lifestyle. Routine means go to bed at the same time. So naturally the body will wake up at the same time. Let the body wake up naturally at the same time because it has got fulfilled sleep. It has enough to reserves to, 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 to function. Then waking up sattvically means waking up to Vedanta, really. There is no other way to wake up sattvically. Some music you can put, but that also will, the message of that music is again oneness. Soothing music, waking up sattvically, waking up chanting mantras, waking up meditatively, 
sitting with yourself, sattvic, and putting the food that really is needing to go in. And also how you eat reverentially, like it is a personal fire ritual, like a yajna. Because you are not feeding the body, what are you feeding? The indweller within, which is Ganapati, which is Bhagavan. You are feeding the Ganapati sitting inside you. So reverentially, just like you say Pranaya Swaha, Panaya Swaha, Vyanaya Swaha, Udanaya Swaha, Samanaya Swaha, like this you say Swaha, 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 Swaha. This is what it is. Shower is done reverentially, no rush, no fuss. Clothes are worn reverentially. All actions come from a place of, of kindness to oneself and kindness to the Jagat. The two are connected. So this is all and then what you eat, how you eat, how you talk, all these are practices to be cultivated that can lower the tamas and rajas elements and bring out the sattva. Sharing, caring, this all comes under nir, nirdvandvo bhava. Then, this is all on the level of lifestyle, which is described elsewhere in the Bhagavad Gita. 16th, 17th chapter, how to have a temperament, 14th chapter, 15th chapter, 16th chapter. 16th chapter talks about how to have a, a sattvic temperament. And it makes the distinction between two kinds of treasures. And why is it a treasure? What is a treasure? A treasure is that which is accidentally found. <laughs> treasure. Or a treasure is that which was already there buried and it has been discovered. One knew it was there, but one did not have the map for it. <laughs> treasure map was lost. So that is what a treasure is, something that one is sitting on without knowing. And so that is called Daivi Sampat. Sampat, treasure, that one has chanced upon, which is sattvic, which is godlike. And then there is also Asuri Sampat. What is Asuri Sampat? Demonic. Mm. Asurasya idam, belonging to the asuras. Demonic tendencies, which are also like a treasure. So you are sitting on a landmine, <laughs> potentially, <laughs> that can explode any time. You are also sitting on the world's greatest trunk of treasures. Which you invoke is up to you. Which you make dormant by removing, you know, by detonating it safely is also up to you. By rendering it powerless is up to you. Somebody asked Ramana Maharshi the question. Very nice. Out of Sattva Rajas Tamas, he was asked, which one is the one that increases? And Ramana Maharshi says, the one that you cultivate, very simple and profound answer. The one that you cultivate is the one that increases. Oh, I don't like routine. Of course you don't like routine. Who likes routine? The word routine gives allergy, you know. That is the, parad this is part of another paradoxy. That routine is really the, 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 the secret key to mental freedom from routine. To not have a routine mind. You have a routine body and the mind has freedom to roam very beautifully. And then, you know, so the one that you cultivate is the one that the body and the mind want most. So you cultivate sattva and then you find after a few days, if you have a sensitive pravritti, sensitive nature, or after a few weeks, months, you will find that those things that you used to like, you don't like at all. 
you have dropped the desire for rajas and tamas tamasic activities tamasic thoughts tamasic tendencies you have no time for that you don't you don't enjoy that anymore whether it's music or food or lifestyle or companionship you, you know you you see that you don't want, you don't care for that you have grown you may not say anything to the other people because also you have grown in compassion you are not trying to judge them but you have grown and it's wonderful to see that and so nitya sattvastah so always catch hold of this sattva in the ways that we have described by cultivating the daivi sampat within oneself ignoring the asuri so if you water the weeds only they will grow correct <laughs> even without watering we have a hard time eliminating them and so this is how to be and then there is a that is the overt way on the level of the lifestyle and then for those who are ready there is a vedantic way to be sattvic because we look at the root cause of rajasik of the increasing rajasik and tamasik tendencies in the universe what is the root cause ignorance, ignorance. what is the root cause in, let's go a little before ignorance so what is the root cause the root cause of course of everything is ignorance absolutely correct what is the cause of all this competition of all this you know uh, strife of people holding people insecurity. insecurity insecurity about what what i should have what is due to me my own protection and nobody is looking out for me you know and this is what the whole fear of everybody is especially in the west that i'm just going to be out on the road pushing one cart shopping cart yeah bag bag person you know now these bags have become costly <laughs> so i'm going to be all alone and money less penny less and people less food less this is some kind of an american nightmare not the american dream it's the opposite of that yeah because every dream has a shadow this the american night where i'll be out you know in the cold not even a cardboard box to protect myself from the elements and i have seen and heard people voice this incessantly where this fear comes from we don't know we don't need to try to look into that into the mindset of that we have to look at the fear itself as an in, as an extreme expression of insecurity and that extreme expression of insecurity comes from the scarcity mentality of being so scared that there are no not enough resources not enough time not enough people to love me not enough anything so always you have to say you know you have to kind of be cautious you have to be you know not that one should be a spendthrift but this is the opposite of that you know you don't live well in the present because you are worried one is worried about the future so therefore the secret way to adopting a sattvic lifestyle is given at the end of this mantra nirjoga kshemo bhava nir means what without devoid of so be bhava be o arjuna be be what devoid of yoga and kshema be the one who is not interested who makes a conscious effort to not pursue yoga and kshema who oh, i just signed up for the yoga classes <laughs> last week now you are asking me to give it up <laughs> no 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 not that yoga what is the definition of yoga in the bhagavad gita huh? what does yoga mean in the bhagavad gita hmm one meaning is to connect yes but that's not what is what talked about here keeping the shara oh. in mind mm, no 
know there's a technical definition of yoga which we have discussed so hoping against hope i thought <laughs> perhaps it will come out yoga when it's used with kshema has a specific meaning listen there'll be a quiz afterwards and uh, even if there isn't sometimes i say that so that it is goes deeper in the in in the psyche apraptasya prapanam yoga yoga is when it's used along with kshema the definition of yoga is gaining that the desire or the predilection or the concern or the preoccupation of gaining or the pursuit of gaining that which one doesn't have yoga and then kshema protecting that which one has which one wants to have kshema yoga kshema yoga is gaining that which one wants which one doesn't have kshema protecting that which one wants which already has but which one is afraid of going away like health like loved ones you know you keep worrying about all that yoga kshema by extension the definition also includes keeping at bay what you don't want correct mm-hmm. and getting rid of what you might have you know inadvertently acquired which you don't want <laughs> yeah that's why we have garage sales everything that one doesn't want is put in garage of course mental tendencies only if it was so easy to put them in the garage so this includes so in other words gaining what i want the pursuit of gaining what i want and protecting what i have and getting rid of what i don't want what is this yoga and kshema are glorified names for ah <laughs> yes raga dvesha so the raga dvesha pursuit of acquiring what i don't have is called yoga and the raga dvesha fire based pursuit of protecting what i already have is called kshema these are just fancy words for raga dvesha pursuits then why doesn't bhagwan call them raga dvesha pursuits he doesn't want arjuna to and all of us to feel bad <laughs> yeah so he gives them fancy names that's all it is <laughs> nir yoga kshemo bhava arjuna o oh, arjuna is this a gita class no no this is ganapati upanishad <laughs> just a relevant quotation so arjuna be the one who is devoid of yoga kshema pursuits ayya yo if i don't pursue yoga and kshema what am i going to pursue huh kya bacha hai what else is left to pursue ha bhagwan himself you pursue that bhagwan is you that knowledge of bhagwan you pursue that ganapati you pursue that ganapati you pursue forget yoga kshema go to the one who is that security now we are talking relatively here because we are still in the process of cleansing the mind so pursue that relative security who is the who is the adhyaksha who is in charge of yoga kshema the one who has got the trunk of all yoga kshemas locked up and is sitting on it is bhagavan so don't pursue yoga kshema pursue bhagavan krishna recognize bhagavan krishna as the lord of all yoga and kshema and pursue bhagavan krishna this is very intelligent and a satvik way of doing things you go to the source immediately but then what will happen to the things i want and need there is a promise given there is a promise given yeah there is a great promise given in the bhagavad gita ananya ha chintayanto ma very famous verse ananya anya means what other 
Ananya means what? Not other. Not other means as myself alone. Ananya, non-duly. Chintayanto maam, the one who pursues me, the one who contemplates upon me. Ye janaha, those two people, pari upasate, worship me as non-separate from themselves, who contemplate upon me as non-separate from themselves. Who are they? Vedantins. And I have told you, if you are not a Vedantin, what are you? Vedanta out. Yeah. So better be a Vedantin. <laughs> better be in Vedanta. Because <laughs> you, know, you don't want to be a Vedanta out. And stand out like that. So if you are a Vedantin, that non-dual way of worshipping, through the pursuit of the knowledge, through visualizing Ganapati in the heart, however you do it, through recognizing that what I pursue is myself alone. And until I see that, I, I look upon Bhagavan as my, the source of my pursuit and my prayer becomes, may I know what you know? <laughs> may I know who you are as, and may I know that you are non-separate from me. That's the only prayer. So such people, ye janaha paryupasate, tesham, for such people, for who, for the ones who, for one minute, one second thought, okay, I am non separate from Bhagavan and then went about their daily activities. No. Nitya abhiyuktana, the ones who have made an effort all the time and are yukta, abhiyukta means together. They are together as people. They have pulled themselves together in order to follow a sattvic lifestyle. <clears throat> and they have dropped rajas and tamas mostly, even though they may occasionally come under their spell, their pursuit is sattva. They may come under a brief spell of something, but they, are, they quickly come out of that. Tesham nityabhiyuktanam, for such people, yoga kshemam vahami aham. Aham, I. Who is I? Bhagavan Krishna speaking, yes. Let us make sure who is this I. Vah means what? First conjugation. Ah, vah to carry. Very good. Vahami. I carry. What? Their yoga kshema. Ah, what a promise. What a big promise. And Bhagavan doesn't say, don't drop the fears. Don't drop the insecurities. He, he cannot say. He doesn't say because he knows that the person is not ready to do that. You cannot tell somebody who is sad, don't be sad. This is not going to work. Don't be angry, even better. If you say don't be angry to somebody who is angry, what will happen? Yeah, they will get even angrier. They will beef you on the head for saying that. You have to be at a safe distance if you want to talk like that. Out of the reach of anything they may throw. Because they are going to get angrier. Nobody wants to be angry. And nobody wants to be sad and neither does anyone want to be insecure. Who wants to be insecure? No one. Going, going, gone. Nobody wants to be insecure. So one knows, Bhagavan knows that the, the human being is helpless in this regard. This is the bestial tendencies. In fact, it's worse than the bestial tendency. Animals are territorial. Rrr. It will, you know, the dog, if you come near, it's anything that it thinks belongs to it. Whether it's the people in the house, whether it's the things in the house, things in the neighborhood, the baby in the house, they get very protective. And the dog, you know, will bury one bone in the yard for tomorrow, maybe. But it will not say, this bone is for my children, for my puppies. This bone is for my puppies, puppies, another bone. This is for my puppies, 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 puppies. For seven generations it doesn't hold. Animals are also insecure. It, it's very clear. They have territorial behavior. They show fear. They, they, they hold things. They collect. All this is very... But the human being seems to be just a, a, a riot of insecurity. Not only for oneself, one is insecure for the next generation, next three generations. 
even when one is not going to be around, one is insecure, what will happen? Who cares? <laughs> even if you care, are you going to be in charge? No. No, I can at least haunt and hover and... <laughs> yeah, that's also not in your charge. So therefore what? So therefore, Bhagavan doesn't say give up insecurity because you are not, if, if you are, you know, if you are holding the insecurity, like the, I am holding the flower, and if somebody says drop the flower, I can oblige. But if insecurity is holding me, <laughs> and I want to get away from the insecurity, I am under its spell. So Bhagavan knows that. So Bhagavan gives a beautiful way. He says, let me take care of your insecurity. You do what you have to do. You come to me and lay down your insecurity, like even a flower, at my feet. Worship me with your insecurity. That becomes a dravya, that becomes a material. You worship me with your insecurity. Make a garland, string, a whole string of insecurities and garland me with your insecurities. But let it go at that altar. Mm. Give it to me. I'll take care of it. Like a parent tells the child, don't worry. Don't worry about your school assignment. I will help you. Don't worry if you've not done it properly. I'll talk to the teacher. You see? And so this adult inner child <laughs> He's being parented here by Bhagavan. You are allowing Bhagavan to parent the insecurity, which is a wonderful thing. And that immediately, when you let go of that holding and the hoarding, there is a big release that happens. And then the mind and the body and the senses, the entire persona becomes sattvic. Because really, the one who is insecurity pursuer, the pursuer of insecurity is, is the one who has to keep cranking the rajas and tamas to keep them going. The tamas to be insensitive to other people's insecurities and the rajas to have that competitive edge to pursue their own insecurities without compassion for either themselves or the rest of humankind. So the more you crank Rajas and Tamas, you know, it's like that bubble machine, you keep doing this and bubbles start coming. The more you crank out Rajas and Tamas, the more cranky you become. So therefore, the best way to catch hold of Sattva is to say, here, take it all away. How often do you have to say it? Nitya, all the time. <laughs> Why all the time? <laughs> because once is not enough, twice, not enough, three times, not enough, because this insecurity has plagued me from several lifetimes. And then there are different, and in the, the insecurity morphs into various avatars. <laughs> there are avatars of insecurity. First, there is the original insecurity. What is that? The jivik, in, you know? Garden variety jivik insecurity. Every jiva has this. I know it's time for break. Hang in there. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then what? Then there is a specific insecurity, ancestral insecurity. This is how the great grandmother was insecure. And she passed on that insecurity because it's the jivik insecurity with an ancestral flavor depending upon the immigration patterns, depending upon the economic situation, depending upon whether they grew up in the depression, so many factors are there. There is that ancestral insecurity. And then there is the familial insecurity. There is gender-based insecurity. Don't think it's only for women. Men also are insecure. And then there is the insecurity, country-based insecurity, country-based scarcity. I am American and therefore I have these issues. You know, that kind of a, kind of a thing. Culture-based insecurity. See, nothing, you are, now you are having various flavors. Like, you know, you have that, uh, in India we have this, you know, they just have mm, some ice. And over that they put various uh, 
sugared and colored water, all artificial, but uh, it used to be very tasty when one was a kid, you know, one was a child. So then it, it's handed on a stick, you know, most unhygienic don't have it, but if it's still around. <laughs> But, you know, you, you, you take a lump of ice, you know, you just, uh, and then make it into some kind of a little snowball and then you put various sugared and colored water. So the insecurity is like that. And the colored water would have some flavor, you know, almond flavor, orange flavor, mango flavor, like this, pineapple flavor. So culture-based insecurity, kinship, network-based insecurity. Ancient insecurity, contemporary insecurity, modern insecurity and all these gang up and pounce on the person constantly leaving no room except to be tamasic and rajasic to overcome this insecurity which can be only overcome by knowing that there is really no such insecurity. This is the spoof of the colorations in which, in whose spell, in whose net I have fallen like the trapped bird. I think I'm trapped by the net of insecurity. And when does this happen? When I don't know my net worth as Atma, mm -hmm. as Ganapati. No. More we'll see after the break. Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadagya Purnamivavashishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shantihi Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari hi Om. Yeah, I'll look at the questions after I get my glasses.